On the evening of the 24th of December 1992, police arrested two men in Central Park in New York on a litany of charges, including conspiracy to commit murder, breaking and entering, theft and child endangerment. The pair had broken out of Stateville Correctional Center in Illinois just three days prior and were found by police covered in varnish and birdseed and had been incapacitated by a large flock of pigeons. According to witnesses, they had chased a young boy into the park and were threatening him with a gun when a regular patron of the park, Annie Lawrence, intervened by dousing them with birdseed, causing the birds to swarm all over them. Police had received this 911 call from the boy they were chasing just minutes earlier. His name was Kevin McAllister and he was just 10 years old. Hello, the two guys who are Duncan's toy chest are in the park, Central Park West and 95th Street. Look for fireworks. Hurry, they got a gun. In response, multiple police closed on the area, resulting in the arrests. The two men arrested were Harry Lime, 47, and Marvin Merchant. 33, both from Illinois. The pair were serving prison sentences of over 20 years each on multiple counts of breaking and entering, burglary, police impersonation, and theft, when they successfully broke out of Stateville Prison in a daring daylight jailbreak with five other prisoners. Three were caught the following day, and another two handed themselves into police. The men escaped after inmates set lounges on fire, smashed windows, and assaulted guards during the brazen riot. The pair both got their start in crime at a very young age. Harry Lyme was born on the 2nd of December 1945 in the east side of Chicago and dropped out of school before completing the sixth grade. His father was an alcoholic and was physically abusive towards Harry, who ran away from home and spent his teen years in and out of juvenile detention facilities for petty thefts and muggings. Marvin Merchant, also a Chicago native, was born on the 3rd of April 1959 and also spent much of his teen years in trouble with the law. The two met after sharing a cell for two years together at Stateville Prison and started collaborating on burglaries together in the affluent Oak Park area of Chicago. Their MO was to first gather information about potential target houses in the area. Lyme would do this by dressing as a police officer and then going door to door in the neighborhood and introducing himself under the pretense of being a friendly local cop doing routine checks of the security of the occupants' houses. Once they had selected their target locations to burglarize and found out when the occupants would not be at home, they used the van pictured here to approach the location. It was adorned with the name of a fake plumbing company to avoid suspicion. They would then use crowbars to gain entry and fill the van with any valuables they could find, including TVs, VCRs, jewelry, and cash. They were known in the media as the wet bandits because after robbing each house, they would stuff paper towels into the plug holes and turn the taps on, intentionally flooding kitchens and basements, causing thousands of dollars worth of damage. Unfortunately for the bungling burglars, this meant that when they were finally caught, the police knew every house they had hit. On the evening of the 24th of December 1991, police were tipped off by a member of the public that two suspicious looking men were seen breaking and entering a property at 656 Lincoln Boulevard and they swooped in and made the arrests. Police seized thousands of dollars worth of stolen goods from the pair's van, from cash to jewelry and even children's Christmas toys. The robbers were spotted by local residents on multiple occasions staking out the affluent suburb in a distinctive plumbing van. The police officer in charge of the investigation, Sheriff Peter Hughes, stated the following. We have been looking for these guys for a long time. We have reason to believe that Harry Lyon was impersonating a police officer to gain entry into the households before the occupants left for vacation. They then targeted the most wealthy homes in the area after establishing that the owners were away. Residents have told us that Mr. Lyon was making sure homeowners were taking proper precautions before they left for their vacations. When the pair were arrested, they visually displayed multiple injuries. Doctors indicate that Harry Lyme suffered second degree burns to his head, right hand, and blunt force trauma to the face, with some of his teeth missing. Marv Merchants was arrested wearing no shoes, and upon inspection, he had a deep wound which injured some of the tendons in his left foot. He also suffered blunt force trauma to the head, which oddly left a mark in the shape of an iron. 
It is unknown how they received these injuries as the pair did not cooperate with the police. Due to the overwhelming evidence stacked against them, they were both found guilty of all charges and spent the next year in prison until their breakout and arrival in New York. According to police, the pair hid in the back of a fish truck bound for New York and upon their arrival went straight to work casing the downtown area for potential businesses to break into. They decided to target this toy store, Duncan's Toy Chest, which was situated near the Plaza Hotel on 5th Avenue and 59th Street. The young boy who called in the tip to police, Kevin McAllister, was able to capture a recording of the duo admitting to their plan after they kidnapped him outside the Plaza Hotel where he was staying. The recording was later used as evidence in court and played a crucial role in getting a guilty verdict against the wet bandits for their latest crime spree. I was able to obtain a copy of the tape in my research for this video. Busted out of the clink and we're doing fine. We're gonna be doing even better. Because we're not robbing houses anymore. <laughs> now we're robbing toy stores. At midnight tonight, we're hitting Duncan's toy chest. Five floors of cash. Then after that, we grab a couple of phony passports. Ma! That off the Rio. Ma, huh? You wanna shut up? What's the difference? He's not gonna talk to anybody. Except maybe a fish. Or the undertaker. <gasps> Let's just get him to the subway tunnel. I'll feel a lot better once we get him on ice. An interesting fact about this case is that Kevin McAllister was actually supposed to be on a family vacation in Miami, but it was later revealed by police that he was in New York alone after a mix-up at the airport in Chicago meant he boarded the wrong flight. The resourceful youngster had booked himself into the Plaza Hotel with his father's credit card, but got mixed up with the wet bandits after they apparently recognized him from a burglary they had done of his home in Chicago and didn't want him alerting the police to their presence in New York. Kevin, who was a big fan of cheese pizza, was the youngest child of Peter and Kate McAllister, and the youngest sibling of Buzz, Megan, Linny and Jeff. Fortunately, he was able to escape his kidnappers and decided rather than going straight to the police, he would gather further evidence against the wet bandits and attempt to foil their plan. He snapped these two photos of them in the act that evening, breaking into and robbing Duncan's toy chest, and then made his phone call to 911. After their arrest, the pair were found guilty on all charges, thanks to the evidence and testimony provided by Kevin McAllister, and both were extradited back to Illinois, where they are serving life sentences for their crimes. 